in part 1 we had seen the central dogma and the transcription in prokaryotes in part 2 we had seen transcription in eukaryotes now in part 3 we will be studying about the translation process in prokaryotes so this is professor r m mandrakar from jss art science and commerce college goka So now what is translation? The synthesis of polypeptide molecule by the arrangement of amino acids in the same sequence as that of the codons in the mRNA molecule is called translation. Now in prokaryotes, the transcription and translations occur simultaneously when there is rapid need of the protein molecule. And both these processes occur in the cytosol. The machinery required for translating the language of mRNA into the language of proteins is composed of the following primary components. Number one, mRNA, which carries the genetic information of DNA in form of codons. Then transfer RNA, which acts as an adapter between the codons and the amino acid they specify. Third, amino acids, which are present in the amino acid pool of the cytosol, and enzymes. Amino acyl tree RNA synthetase and peptidyl transferase. So these are the two uh, enzymes required. And a total of nine protein factors are required for the translation process in prokaryotes. Three are initiation factors. 3 are elongation factors and 3 are releasing factors. So now let us see each function of these nine factors. Now the initiation factor 1, it helps in stabilizing the 30S ribosomal subunit. Uh, Initiation factor 2, uh, it helps in binding the FMET tRNA with the 30S subunit mRNA complex and also helps in binding of GTP and hydrolase. The initiation factor 3, it binds 30S subunit with the active mRNA. Now there are three elongation factors namely EFTU. Now this uh, factor binds GTP, brings amino acyl tRNA to A site of ribosomes. Then uh, TF, sorry, elongation factor TS, it helps in generation of this uh, uh, EFTU. And EFG helps in translocation of ribosomes. Now the releasing factors, even these are three in number. Uh, releasing factor one helps to dissociate polypeptide from tRNA ribosome complex specific for UAA and UAG stop codons. Releasing factor two helps to dissociate polypeptide and it is specific for UAA and UGA. And the releasing factor 3, it stimulates both releasing factor 1 and releasing factor 2. Now the whole process of translation can be studied under following steps. First one is activation of amino acid second attachment of amino acid to tRNA third attachment of mRNA with ribosomes initiation of polypeptide chain elongation of polypeptide chain termination of polypeptide chain and processing of polypeptide chain
So first let us study about the activation of amino acids. The activation of amino acids takes place in the cytosol. Each amino acid must be covalently linked with transfer RNA molecule in order to take part in protein synthesis, which depends upon the adapter function of the transfer RNA to ensure that the correct amino acids are incorporated. The covalent bond that is formed between the amino acids and the transfer RNA is a high energy bond that enables the amino acid to react with the end of the growing polypeptide chain to form a new peptide bond. For this reason, the synthesis of amino acyl tRNA is also referred to as amino acid activation. Each transfer RNA has a clover leaf secondary structure with the anticodon accessible at the end of the anticodon stem loop. During synthesis of amino acyl tRNA, the amino acid is covalently bound to the A residue of the CCA sequence at the 3' end of the transfer RNA. Each transfer RNA molecule carries only a single amino acid. The attachment of an amino acid to a tRNA is catalyzed by an enzyme called amino acyl tRNA synthetase. A separate amino acyl tRNA synthetase exists for every amino acid, thus making 20 synthetases in total. The synthesis reaction occurs in two steps. The first step is the reaction of amino acid and ATP to form an amino acyl adenylate, also known as amino acyl AMP. Now here you see this is the amino acid then here uh, ATP molecule is used from ATP molecule AMP gets attached to this uh, enzyme and pyrophosphate is released. In the second step Without leaving the enzyme, the amino acyl group of amino acyl AMP is transferred to the third prime end of the tRNA molecule to form amino acyl tRNA synthetase. In this way, all amino acids are active and bound to transfer RNA at the 3 prime end. Here ATP molecule and magnesium uh, divalent cations are utilized. In prokaryotes, the N formulated methionine is the chain initiating amino acid, whereas methionine is the chain initiation amino acid in eukaryotes. Methionine is activated by methionyl tRNA synthetase. For N formyl methionine, two types of tRNAs are used that is, tRNA met and tRNA F met. Similarly, all 20 amino acids are activated and then bond to their specific transfer RNA, forming amino acyl tRNAs. The next step is attachment of mRNA to ribosomes. A short sequence rich in purine. Now here you can see uh, at the 5 prime end this is a mRNA which is having this uh, Purine rich nucleotides A, G, G, A, G, G, U. Now, this sequence is called the sine Dalgarno sequence. This sequence has a complementary pairing with the 16S ribosomal RNA in the small ribosomal subunit. Therefore, 
This is the binding site for the 30th ribosomal subunit, which then migrates in three prime direction along the mRNA until it encounters the AUG initiation codon. Now here, now this is the smaller subunit of the ribosome. Now here, these are the initiation factors. Now, these initiation factors help in preventing the larger subunit to come and uh, attach to it and uh, also facilitate the attachment of mRNA to the ribosomes with this complementary pairing between the shine dalgarno sequence. Now, remember this the shine dalgarno sequence is present only in prokaryotic ribosomes. So, the attachment of the mRNA to this uh, shine dalgarno sequence is seen only in prokaryotes and not in eukaryotes. The initiation begins with the binding of the initial factor 1 and initial factor 3 to the small 30s subunit. Now, these are the initiation factors which are attached to this ribosomal subunit. The role of the initiation factors is to stop the 30s subunit binding to the 50s subunit in absence of mRNA and FMET transfer RNA. Now, the next step is initiation. Translation is initiated by initiating codon of mRNA. It is AUG and codes for F methionine, that is N formyl methionine. Remember, in all the prokaryotes, the first amino acid that is attached to the initiation codon is N formyl methionine only. Now, here, um, the first transfer RNA charged with the F methionine with anticodon UAC to match with the codon AUG of mRNA joins the 30S ribosome mRNA complex in presence of magnesium divalent cations and incentric factors and GTP as a source of energy. The initiator tRNA charged with the N formyl methionine and in a complex with the initiation factor 2 and GTP now bind, now binds and the initiation factor 3 is this complex which consists of the mRNA smaller subunit and the FMET transfer RNA. This is called as the initiation complex that is 30 subunit initiation complex. Once this 30S initiation complex is formed, then the initiation factors are removed and now the larger subunit comes and attaches to it. Now, here the larger subunit is a 50S ribosome. This larger subunit has got three sites, namely the amino acyl or A site, the peptidyl or P site, and translocation site or E site. Once the complete ribosome is formed, the transfer RNA charged with the F methionine occupies the P site. The mRNA is then inserted in the tunnel between the two subunits, as you can see in this figure here. And the complete structure thus formed is called the initiation complex. After the formation of the initiation complex, the next step that is the elongation process begins. At the start of first round of elongation, the initiation codon is positioned in the P site with the FMET tRNA compound to its via the codon and anticodon base pairing. That is, the codon is having the codes AUG and the anticodon is having the uh, code UAG. So, they are complementary with each other and thus the pairing of this, uh, the first transfer RNA, that is FMET transfer RNA comes and binds here and it occupies the P site of the ribosome. The next codon in the mRNA is positioned in the A site. The elongation of the polypeptide chain occurs in three steps called the elongation cycle. Namely, the amino acyl tRNA binding, peptide bond formation and translocation. 
Now, when a new codon appears at the A site, the corresponding amino acid tRNA for the second codon binds to the A site via the complementary pairing. Now, as you can see here, the codon is GAA and this anticodon is CUU and it is carrying uh, amino acid glutamine. So, this because of this complementary pairing, the binding of the transfer RNA occurs with this initiation codon at the A site. So, this is the first that is amino acyl tRNA binding. Now, following this binding, ATP is hydrolyzed and elongation factor Tu is released. Now, this elongation factor Tu is necessary for the binding of the uh, transfer RNA to the codon. So, once the binding takes place, the elongation factor Tu and GTP complex is converted into elongation factor Tu and GDP. Then this GDP, from this complex, the GDP is uh, dislodged with the, this uh, elongation factor TS and uh, this EFTS and EFTU, that is elongation factor TU and elongation factor TS complex is then again converted back into EFTU and GTP using a GTP molecule and the EFTS is released. So, this cycle continues. So, that is how the elongation factor TS helps in again reactivating reactivation of this elongation factor TU. That is the main function of this elongation factor TS. So, this cycle we call it as the elongation factor TU elongation factor TS exchange cycle. The second step is peptide bond formation. Now, this is catalyzed by the peptidyl transferase. Now, when a new codon, uh, when a new codon comes here and the corresponding transfer RNA comes here carrying the amino acid, then a peptide bond is established between the first amino acid and the second amino acid with the help of enzyme peptidyl transferase. In this reaction, the carboxyl end of the amino acid bonds with the transfer RNA in the P site is coupled from the transfer RNA and become joined by a peptide bond to the amino acid group of the amino acid linked in the transfer RNA at the A site. So, thus a peptide bond is formed. So, this is the second step. After formation of the peptide bond, the codon again moves one, the ribosome moves one codon length in the three prime direction. Now, a new codon comes at the A site. The first codon comes at the E site and the second codon comes at the A site. So, likewise, once this amino acid is linked, the transfer RNA is free and now correspondingly at the A site, the transfer RNA now depending upon the anticodon site will come a new transfer RNA come and attach here and that brings about the third step that is the translocation. Now, when a new codon comes at the A site and the codon at the E site will be released here. In the third step, a complex of elongation factor EFG and GTP binds to the ribosomes. Three concreted movements now occur collectively called as translocation. The deacylated uh, transfer RNA moves from the P site to the E site. The dipeptidyl tRNA in the A site moves to the P site and the ribosome moves along the mRNA from 5 prime to 3 prime direction by 3 nucleotide length to place a next codon at the A site. During the translocation events, GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate and e elongation factor G is released which is ready to bind for more GTP for another round of elongation. After translocation, the 
A site is empty and ready to receive for the next amino acid. The A site and the E site cannot be occupied simultaneously. Thus, deacylated transfer RNA is released from the E site before the next amino acid tRNA binds to the A site to start a new round of elongation. So like this, the elongation continues adding one amino acid to the C terminal end of the growing polypeptide for each codon that is red with the peptidyl tRNA moving back and forth from P to A site as it grows. Thus the elongation continues and a long peptide chain is formed and based upon the codon anticodon complementarity till the A site is occupied by one of the terminating codons. So once the A site gets occupied by any one of the terminating codons or stop codons or the nonsense codons then the elongation process stops and the next process that is the termination process begins. When one of the stop codon arrives at the A site of the ribosome, mean that there are three stop codons namely UAG, UAA and UGA. If any one of them comes here at the A site, then the termination process begins. Unlike other codons, prokaryotes do not contain amino acyl tRNAs complementary to these uh, stop codons. Instead, one of the two releasing factors bind to this uh, stop codon. Now, as I told you, there are three releasing factors, RF1, RF2 and RF3. The releasing factor 1 recognizes the codon UAA and UAG. So now here you can see there is a stop codon UAG. So here this is recognized by the releasing factor 1. But suppose if there is a codon UGA, then the releasing factor 2 will recognize it. So likewise, the RF1 recognizes UAA and UAG and RF2 recognizes UAA and UGA. And a third releasing factor, RF3, is also needed to assist the RF1 or RF2 interaction with the ribosomes. Thus, either RF1 and RF3 or RF2 and RF3 bind depending upon the exact termination codon in the A site. Once the releasing factors bind, to the ribosomes, the release factors causes the peptidyl transferase activity to transfer the peptide to, the, to a water molecule instead of the amino acyl tRNA, thus effectively cleaving the bond between the polypeptide and the transfer RNA in the P site. This free polypeptide now leaves the ribosomes followed by the mRNA and free tRNA and the ribosome dissociates into 30S and 50S subunits and then now it is again ready for the second round of translation. So with this the termination process ends. Now the last step in the translation process is the post translation modification. The newly formed polypeptide may not be biologically functional. So it undergoes several folding and processing known as post-translation translation modification. First is amino terminal and carboxyl terminal modification. The N-formyl methionine in case of bacteria is removed from polypeptide chain and some carboxyl terminal are also removed by enzymatic action to make functional proteins. Second, loss of signal sequences. In some protein, the amino terminal end is cleaved by specific peptidase so that protein loses its signaling property. Third, modification of individual amino acids. 
In a polypeptide chain, the amino acids may be phosphorylated, acetylated for modifications. Fourth is attachment of carbohydrate side chain. Carbohydrate side chain is added to make some proteins functional for example the glycoproteins and lipoprotein then last is addition of isoprenyl group in some proteins isoprenyl group is added so as to make a protein active so these are the five post translation changes that we see in the polypeptide chain in prokaryotes and after these modifications the protein becomes a functional protein and this functional protein may serve as a enzyme or it may add to the structure of the organism so thus we conclude this topic on the translation in prokaryotes in my next uh, video i'll be telling you about the translation in in eukaryote so thank you take care